Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. My teens were in the early 2000s where Fast and the Furious came out. I mean, I grew up playing Need for Speed, Gran Turismo, all these games where you would modify cars. You're still in school, you don't have funds to do it. Um, you, you go to the races, I mean, West Bank Racetrack. There was a lot of like street cars that were being modified to outrun faster uh, production sports cars. And um, yeah, that, and then when I was like, when I turned 21, I turbocharged my first car. And ever since, it's, it's just been a hobby of mine. My name is Boris, and this is my Turbo Conquest. The whole thing for us, um, especially in the early 2000s, there was a big underground racing scene in Gauteng. Um, I mean, I was, I was a little kid, and there was places like, I remember it was called Pure and Cool was a place. I thought it was like this, you know, a spot. Meanwhile, it's a, it's a roadhouse. Uh, here in, this, in Joburg where the guys used to race and they used to also race the Jet Park which I also thought was like a, a um, what you call it, like a racetrack or something, Jet Park and then the older I got I realised it's a suburb of Boxburg and there was, there was a lot of street racing and uh, back in the days it was so big and my brother used to take me to these events and uh, that's where I became a petrol head, you know. For me, it, it's always getting a cheap car or, or an everyday car that's accessible to the masses and modifying it to make it faster than like an M car or, or a sports car. So, I mean, with a car, I mean, I've raced, I've raced a lot of cars. Um, it, gives, it gives a lot of guys a, a, a surprise and a lot of hidings. I've raced from M3s, I've raced S3s, Golf GTIs, um, RS3s, uh, and then recently I've raced the R35 GTR. And, um, you know, if the guys don't know what it is, you know, they look at it as an old scrap Toyota Conquest with an exhaust, and then, uh, yeah, when we get to the line, it's a, it's a different story. So yeah, so obviously in South Africa, the Toyota Taz, or this is a Conquest, which is the, the previous model, was so popular. I mean, you see them everywhere, you know, it's, it's, it's a commuting car. So, you know, people look at it, uh, you, you know, I've been pulled over at the petrol station, guys are like, I'll give you 35k, it's clean. I'm like, buddy, you know, <laughs> if I must tell you what it once cost me, you know. Um, but, but yeah, people love it, especially, I mean, there are fast modified Conquests or Taz in South Africa, but not that many at this level, and you don't really see them. So, so my best time with the car was, was a 12 hour at 191 at Midvale. So that's the, the quickest I've done. Uh, the, the track conditions weren't great. I've learned that the car looks a bit better on the streets. Um, the time that I was there, it was a full prep session, but with the road tires, it was actually spinning more um, at the track than on the street. So on the street, it does hook up pretty well. Um, yeah, it's quick, robot to robot, it's very quick. Um, yeah, it's given a, a couple of cars surprises and hidings. So that's what I, what I like about the car. It's a Toyota Silica all-wheel drive swapped. It's got a 3S GTE motor. Uh, pistons, rods, um, uh, all the ARP goodies. Uh, it's got a GT35 turbo um, and it runs on ethanol. It's um, that's pretty strong. <laughs> it, um, yeah, so, so everything's from a Toyota Silica. It's the gearbox, the uh, drive shafts, the prop, the diff. Um, literally, they took a ST205 Silica and put it all in a, a 90s Toyota Conquest. So the car's running on a, a ECU Master Black ECU. Uh, it's got flex fuel on it. So on pump fuel, it brings the boost down to about 0.8 bar, makes between, I'd say, 220, 230 kilowatts on the wheels. Um, on, if the ethanol content is anything over 50, 55%, it ups the boost to 1.5, 1.6 bar. And yeah, it makes about 300 kilowatts on the wheels, on all four wheels. We've got uh, Cropoli side shafts, 
it's got uh, a twin disc clutch and yeah it's got semi slicks on so it can boogie So I've got all the sensors, the, the add-ons with it. It's got the GPS uh, for the vehicle speed and then also you can do boost per speed or boost per gear if you want. Um, it's got also the ECU Master um, Advanced Display Unit which tells you everything that you need to know. The drivetrain, like, like I mentioned, is silica. It's got a tilt and twin disc clutch uh, just to help. I, I went through um, <laughs> my mechanic, Rodney, uh, we went through cr clutches like crazy and trust me, changing a clutch in this car is not very simple because the whole front end of the car has to come out to remove the gearbox. So it's it's quite a mission. So we, we went through the stock clutch, we went through a, a single disc clutch and now we're on the tilt and twin disc and it's holding. We also have a magnus and slipper valve which helps um, you know take the shunt off the drive train. Uh, the interior is a bit gutted. I, I, you know, I'm not going to have back seat passengers. So the back's been stripped out. It's got two um, Subaru WRX uh, STI seats in it. Uh, right now, it's the most uh, unreliable part of the car at the moment. I am looking to replace it with something, but Honda hasn't made any good seats for a while. Um, other than that, yeah, it's got an OMP steering wheel, MoMA pedals, and yeah, just leaving the interiors clean and as simple as possible. A lot of the times when I open the bonnet, people don't even know it's, um, it's all-wheel drive. It looks like a, a, a simple engine swap, the mounts look simple, but the moment you look underneath the car, you actually realize how much work went into it. It's running a fuel cell in it, although it's hidden away nicely, people don't notice it. Fuel tank had to get removed because uh, the drive shaft and the, the diff goes there. Um, there's brackets made for the diff in the front. There's a, there's a lot of fabrication made for the subframe to hold the gearbox and to hold the engine and everything like that. Like I mentioned, to change the clutch is such a mission because everything is fabricated and incorporated in the front. So it, it's, it's a big job. Eh? <laughs> I think that's why not many people have done it. There's a lot of 3S GTEs front wheel drive in South Africa in, a, in Conquest or Taz, um, but the, the oil drive swap is not so popular because I think if you had to do it now, if you had to take it to a shop and ask them to do it, I think the label will be astronomical. So it's not just a, not a bolt-on, let's put it that way. <laughs> so the motor is, like I mentioned, a Toyota 3S GTE. Uh, the reason being is it's a very accessible motor um, and obviously the Celica came out with it. It's got big ports, it's got big valves, um, it, it's, it's a good flowing motor. Um, and this is the, the Gen 4, so it's one of the last generations of the 3S GTE. So even in stock form, uh, boosting it, you, you, can, you can make good power. You know, it just goes back to Toyota of the 90s. They were really, I mean, you had good motors, you had the 4AGE, 3SGE, GTE, you had the 2J, the 1J, they're, they're really making bulletproof motors back in the days. And um, one thing also, I mean, I mentioned we, we're running on ethanol, and that also helps, uh, you know, create power, but it also um, makes it a bit safer. You know, it prevents detonation, it, it burns cold. So, you know, with the right injectors, we've got 1,000 cc injectors, we've got, um, we, we got a, a Bosch 044 fuel pump. So as long as the fueling and everything and the tune is right, the, the motor will hold. I'm definitely a JDM fanboy. I've always been into the Hondas. Uh, I've loved the Hondas. Uh, it comes from my brother and my friends. They all have Hondas. I'm not a fan of the VWs. I don't like I don't like BMWs. I don't like anything German, to be honest with you. I typically like the the 90s stuff, um, the older stuff, the the more mechanical um, cars. And um, yeah, I'm from that generation. I'd say you know I'm not one of the the PlayStation generation, where it's it's all these new cars with DSG or these direct injection cars that have come with um, turbocharging from the factory. You know, the way I see it, I, I like to see an old like VTEC turbo or an old Golf 1 turbo or a Super Boss or, you know, anything from the 90s that's turbocharged or that's been modified. Because, you, you know, like, if you look at the, the, the off the market or if you look at the racing scene, you know, when the Golf 5 GTI came out, it, it was like everyone had one. And it's not a car you see around anymore, like even the Golf 6. So I, I know there's a big following of like the RS3s and the TTSs, but I can't see it like 10 years or 15 years from now, a kid going through high school saying, I want to buy an RS3 now because it was my dream car when I was in high school, or it's something that I thought was attainable. It feels like they just, they disappear, like they're not as well built as the old, old cars in my opinion. So that's why I'm a JDM fanboy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Cars that Coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars.